Hi everyone, I'm Lee, I'm an intuitive, and every month I take the pulse on what might be showing up emotionally, energetically, psychologically. Three of the themes for November that I will be exploring are global and personal shifts in power. These are ongoing, how is it affecting you? The release of assumptions. We are learning where our perceptions are not correct or true. The third theme will be why are you alive right now? Do you know or are others deciding for you? Eight themes will be covered. Stay tuned for the whole update. Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for November 2022. And firstly, just a quick thank you to all of you for your support around my new book, Conversations with the Z's. It is my guides, the Z's, in conversation with psychotherapist Diana Edwards. You've supported the book and the Audible version so well, thank you. And I'm delighted to say that I'm about to embark on Initiation, which is a channeled mystery school. And it's running right now, so I'll share more about that at the end of this month's update. But let's dive into one of the eight themes that were given to me by my guides for this month. So the first one is something that has been ongoing for the last month or two, but we're very much in the heart of it and it's still happening. Global and personal shifts in power. So for example, we're seeing a lot going on around the world around shifts in power, whether that is people stepping down from positions of power, resigning from positions of power, taking them, Equally, we're seeing a lot of power dynamics playing out around war, oppression, people standing up for their rights. This is always happening at some level on the, on the planet, but especially at the moment, we're going through a really focused period around that, around power dynamics. So you might be somebody who is on the global stage right now. Perhaps you're very much involved in those groups where this is playing out. But for those of us who perhaps aren't, in those positions that we might be witnessing, don't be deceived that we don't feel the ripple effect of it inside ourselves, inside our personal lives. So the global shifts in power is something that we all tend to react around and have an opinion about or move the way that we feel about it over time. So that might be ongoing for you, but the one thing I'm asked to draw your attention to is your personal life what power dynamics are shifting right now. And this can look many different ways to different people. So for example, sometimes a shifting power dynamic can be edgy, difficult, uncomfortable, seem undesired by you, feel like something you don't wanna be going through. Other times, a shift in a power dynamic can be celebratory, can be joyous, can be easy, can be graceful. You have a conversation with someone and it's a well-held conversation by you, it's a well-received conversation by them, and boom, that power dynamic between you changes, lessens, shifts. One of the things my guides are always saying is that we hire each other to play out parts of our lives and our personal themes as a soul so that we can play out healing with each other. So sometimes you have a big blow up with a friend and sure, we can get into our head about it and think about the friend and us and the story of it. But actually, what's usually going on is some kind of action replay, either from our earlier life, our childhood, our early adulthood, or perhaps it's someone that you've known in other times. And here they are again to play out this dynamic with you. So power dynamics and power shifts are continuing to be front and center. And we won't really be out of this until halfway through December. So even though many of you may have noticed it playing out a lot in the last couple of months, November brings a new intensity with it around power shifts. And that can be very laser focus. In some ways, we can be nervous about intensity because we tend to think of that as a dramatic, uncomfortable or difficult energy. But in fact, in November, it will be laser focus, meaning things will happen fast, clarity will appear very quickly. It's the rip the plaster off quickly rather than the rip the plaster off slowly, 
or Band-Aid if you're in the US or other countries that use that term. So it's an interesting time to pay attention to power dynamics in your own life and even within ourselves. Like where are we in our power? Where are we out of our power? How did we get out of our power in the first place? And is this a really good month to investigate that a little, become a bit more aware of it and create actions and environment and support in your life where you can step into just living from your power and your presence. So that's the first theme. The second theme in some ways links into this. Theme two this month is releasing assumptions learning where our perceptions aren't correct or true. So there is the great humbling that happens for all of us when we learn that we are wrong about something or something that we were in a stance around or believing that we had to fight for. We suddenly go, oh, I was a little off around that. Oh, that isn't quite what I thought it was. So I can let that go. So releasing assumptions is part and parcel of the shedding and the changing that we're going through as an identity in, in, our, in our world globally, but also individually right now. So you might be going through either a period of noticing that assumptions you had made about someone else or some other group or some other entity in the world proves not to be actually true. Something else gets revealed and in that assumption, we have to ask, are we defended in our assumptions? Do we make assumptions to make quick decisions about other people or other things? Things that we may be invited to do in our life. Our assumption is, oh God, no, I won't enjoy that. So I'm just going to stop myself from going. Things will be happening in our world for many of us that will be lessening some of that stance that we have we'll be able to let go a little more into the mystery of it all and the unknown of it all. Doesn't mean everybody lives in that space all of the time, but equally for those of you who find that you do live in that space more of the time, and that's something that you've been practicing, surrendering to, I don't really know, you know, this is a very multidimensional place. And if I really come from that knowing, I'm not 100% sure why she just did what she did. I can have some assumptions, but perhaps I should ask her a question about it instead. Or perhaps I should broaden my potential compassion or understanding for why she did it. That's going to be happening a lot at the moment. And it can also again relate to ourselves. Do we make assumptions about ourselves that hold us in patterns that we're ready to let go of and move through? So releasing assumptions is personal. It focuses on how you look at other people in your life and the ultimate end point of releasing assumptions is it opens us out again. And the reason that we often stay defended or held is because we're not sure that we're safe to be open. Or somewhere along the way in our life, it was easier to decide on a judgment or an opinion about a person, place or thing because it kept us safe. Well, now things are turning the other way and you're being shown, I am safe to engage with this in a way that I previously wouldn't have known how to. So it's a very interesting, ultimately beneficial energy that's flying around. But in the moment that it happens, it can bring up little moments of tightness in your heart or your mind or perhaps some shame. Oh, I really judged that person either privately or to their face. So it can also bring out a really nice healing energy around reparation, forgiveness toward other, toward self. So it's an interesting one and it comes very much from the heart, even though assumptions tend to come from the mind. But the assumptions we make in the mind are often protecting or we believe serving the heart and our safety. So we're going through a big shift around that right now and that might show up for you this month. The third theme of the month is allowing your bravery to appear and shift the energy. One of the things that I always find interesting about us as human beings and my guides, the Z's, say this a lot. We forget how much we affect the world around us through the way we show up and through what we do and through what we say and through how we behave and through how we enter a room. 
And we've got these very conditioned minds and ideas as a society about, well, this is that person and this is what they do. But of course, it's not that limited. None of it can actually be that limited. That person is far more multi-layered inside than you perhaps understand them to be. We are more multi-layered inside than we perhaps allow ourselves to remember that we are at times. So when we allow our bravery to appear, when we say the thing that we have perhaps previously not known how to say in a compassionate way, or we do the thing that we've previously worried might upset our family member or our partner or our friend or the people that we work with in our work, it's interesting how we create a shift and a ripple. And it's often that ripple that we're scared to create. And yet the truth of it is that's what we're here for. Doesn't mean throw your weight around in everyone else's direction and just expect them to get on board with it. But this speaks more to the quiet part of us that perhaps is self-censoring. Again, like I said on the previous point, could be for really good historical reasons. Maybe in your past you weren't safe to say, do, or be a certain way. But now things are different and you're different. So allowing your bravery to appear in your conversations, in your actions, in the places that you go, it will shift the energy. And you are supposed to shift the energy. Especially true for those of you who see yourselves as empaths, sensitives, harmonizers. If you like harmonic energy, if you like energy that feels peaceful and good and feels nice to be in, you probably are somebody who has worked to create that in a room or in a relationship. And so you may have talked yourself out of ever saying or doing things that might upset the apple cart. Well, actually, the message for this time and this month is allow your bravery to appear and know that you will shift the energy when it does and be okay with that. It's okay that someone looks a bit shocked for a few minutes because you said something you don't normally say. Start to play with that and start to notice how powerful your personal impact is. And just to be very clear here, I'm speaking about letting something come out of you that is authentic to you, that you've suppressed or pushed down. I'm not talking about testing people by throwing energy bombs left, right, and center in their direction. I simply mean allowing what you feel to come out of you, to be in the room, and it will have a ripple effect on the room. And that's why we're here. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to show up and learn from ourselves, each other. We can always make adjustments to things that we do if we go, oh, I don't want to say that in that way again because it look like it's slightly through the room off. So I'll, I'll find another way to say it. But unless we start being brave and trying things out, we don't know how to adjust ourselves or our behaviors or our actions or our words. So allow a bit more conscious bravery this month. Theme number four, are you shedding or are you insulating, balancing against the outer storm? So energetically, it's a storm right now. And I think we all know that. I myself feel like I have an energy hangover today. And I think they're just happening. They're just going round for various members of us at various times. But it was interesting. My guides were very clear. Some people are shedding and some people are insulating. Now I look at myself, I know I've done both in the last four or five weeks. Sometimes I'm shedding energy in order to balance against the storm that's around us and sometimes I'm insulating against it. Neither are right or wrong. We will all take different approaches depending on what's going on in our life and what we need. But know that if you find yourself shedding a lot, like there's a lot coming off you, you're like, God, I'm really emotional or I'm making loads of changes or I, I keep reorganizing everything in my life and when is it going to calm down? And I, I would really like the ground to settle, but I feel compelled to keep going you're in a big shedding period. And that's your way of reconfiguring yourself while we go through this outer storm in the world, which we've been in for a couple of years. And we know that it can go on for a couple more years, depending on which way you want to look at things. The other side is insulating. It's okay to insulate. Uh, I gave a message about this 
uh, to my portal community this month in our live broadcast. It was very strong and it came through disease. And they were saying, if you do feel overwhelmed, then it's really important to serve your overwhelm, not to just keep pushing through, keep trying to go out there and hope things will be different. No, if you recognize you're overwhelmed, as it's very easy to be right now, what steps can you take to create moments of quiet, moments of calm, moments where you can feel supported or safe for yourself? The more you do that, it compounds. Then your nervous system gets to trust you again. Oh, great. I'm being supported. I'm not being pushed back into the storm. You're recognizing that I, the nervous system, am at the edge of my limit. And I want you to just calm it down for a few days or give me some moments of quiet. So shedding or insulating, two extreme ends of the same scale, which is a reaction to the outer storm trying to balance. The reason this theme came up is uh, they basically said it will be good for us to be aware of what we're doing and also to not judge it harshly, just to recognize and go, oh, I'm in an insulating period. Okay. Okay, I'm in a shedding period. Okay, it too will change. It will pass again as these things do. But um, don't be too surprised by your own surprise at your behaviors in recent months because it's stormy out there energetically. The next theme is heart pain and grief becoming heart appreciation and openness. So, We've talked a little bit in the last couple of months through these updates and also to my portal community, this has come up a lot. Grief and the transformational power of grief and how grief is a worldwide wave right now and has been for a while. So this is something the Z's spoke to me about back in 2019. They said in the years to come, you're going to see grief become one of the great transformers on the planet. And they explained that grief is a window. We often think of grief or traditionally, at least I was raised to think about grief as mourning and mourning the loss of somebody or something and depression and a terrible state. But what the Z's say is that grief is a doorway and it's a doorway to birth. They explain that death and birth energy are very closely linked. So when we are mourning the loss of a person or a thing or a situation, or a version of our old self. We're actually right at the doorway of beginning to birth something new. It can take time. We know that sometimes grief has you for a year, sometimes for two years. It depends on who you are and it depends on the grief you've gone through and it depends on how you are using the grief. Because this is important to understand, we use grief to clear out old grief. So we have one catalytic event in our life that puts us into grief and our body goes, oh great, I have a whole bunch of grief to get rid of. So I'm gonna, while the door is open, I'm gonna pour this through the door, which is why some of us wonder why grief can take so long. But do know that when you do go through a period of grief, you are also going through a period of rebirth. It's just hidden to you in the moment that it's happening. It's happening behind the scenes and around you, and it might take a year or two for you to be able to look back and go, oh, I see what happened. And you don't need to see what, what, what's happening while you're in it. While you're in it, just be with it and let it through you. But many of you will be noticing that the heart pain and grief of the last few years, or perhaps for you the last few weeks or months, in November, there is a growing awareness around that pain and grief becoming heart appreciation and openness. So a good example for this is if you think of when you lose someone that you love, who's very close to you, it's true that it changes us. We suddenly start to recognize the preciousness of time and that nothing is promised and that somebody who was there a few days ago that we were in really close interaction with is suddenly gone. And at first it can make us fall to our knees and be confused and deeply sad, but actually what it does is it shows you a truth of life, which is you never quite know what's going to happen next. So there is this heart appreciation and openness that is now beginning to show its face collectively because we've gone through as a collective quite a lot of grief in the last few years. So it's not to say the grief is gone 
or that it will be gone for everyone, but this new kind of top note of appreciation and openness is now coming in. And you might be feeling that in yourself, or it might be showing up in people in your life that are suddenly a lot softer than you ever remember them being. They might be saying things like, I love you to you, and you're like, whoa, (laughs) she never said that to me before. And it's that appreciation and that openness that's beginning to show up. Again, won't hit everybody at the same time in the same way, but you might be noticing it outside you or feeling it inside you. This all goes back to a theme that I have been, it's funny because you know I do these every month and I normally get eight to ten themes from these guys. I sit down, I get the headlines and there are repetitive themes and usually when there's a repetitive theme I argue about it and go, are you sure we've said this a lot? But they're like, nope, needs to be said again. And I'm like, okay. So this theme is a bit of an old chestnut of the last few years, but there is a, a, a point to it this month. The dissolution of old conditions and programming equals disorientation. So I'll break that down. Basically, you know, none of us, I think, in the last two to three years expected the world to look like or be the way it was. And so that creates this shockwave in all of us where we were all going along on this pattern that we were on and all of a sudden the pattern got interrupted two and a half years ago. Whatever you think about why it did or what was going on, that's that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. If we just look at the energetics of the last two and a half years, it has started to create an even bigger wave of old ways of being, old ways of thinking, and our old programming, the kind of programming that we operate in as a society, which is always going through evolution with each generation, but we've gone through a very fast dissolution of a lot of things that we took for granted. And we're also at a time ecologically where a lot is being spoken of around the changes on the planet and we're seeing the changes on the planet. So you can't deny that change with a capital C is not only in the air, but is actually in people's minds, on people's hearts and in the global conversation. So the end result of this for many of us, even though transformation and change might be something that you yourself aspire to, seek, are a student of, like many of us are, the end result can be disorientation. It's like, where am I? What's going on? What is this planet? I don't understand. The point is that's okay. That's a natural response at the moment to everything that's going on. And there will be periods of disorientation and they will come and go. And some days you might feel like, I'm not even sure I'm in my body and normally I'm quite a grounded person. Uh, But you'll be feeling like, what is going on? Don't worry. That's That disorientation is part of the, we're still pulling out of a lot of old energy and old programming and old conditioning that's still also very much in existence, still here, but we're pulling out of it in quite a dramatic way. Certainly the speed of it for our generation, it's quite a fast pull out. So the disorientation is just par for the course. We haven't yet birthed a completely new world and of course it will it will go in stages it will it will be one step backwards two steps forward two steps backward that that's going to be how it's going to go but the disorientation is energetic for any of you who are energetically aware attuned sensitive you will feel disoriented at times even if you've never felt stronger in your sense of uh, self grounding so it's a strange time Again, try not to beat yourself up if that comes around. I learned many years ago that if I accepted the weird state I sometimes found myself in, I had a much easier life because for years I would fight it. <laughs> What's wrong? Ah. And then it's like, oh, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll channel on it. Maybe I'll get a wider perspective. And at the end of the day, I'm, I've got to move through it. It's just got to move through me. So remember that disorientation can particularly if you're someone who likes control or safety, it can be a little alarming when you first go through it. But if you're still alive and you're walking around the world and your faculties that you're used to are with you, it's not that anything is going wrong, it's just that a lot is changing and you haven't yet become the change you are becoming. Think of disorientation as the chrysalis period. So 
I hope that helps some of you who've maybe been feeling that strongly. Um, final two themes for this month. Firstly, this was an interesting one. Uh, the question, why are you alive? Have you decided why? Or are others deciding for you? Now, I'm going to have to sit with that one for myself a little bit too, but very interesting question from the disease this month. Why are you alive? Have you decided why? Or are others deciding for you? Now, it's interesting because sovereignty is one of the themes that the Zs want to bring into this initiation mystery school that we're about to do. And to me, that really relates to sovereignty. Do we know what we're here for? Do we know what we appreciate? Do we know what we're hoping to experience? Or, like many of us have been, have we just been going along to get along? Doing what we're told to do, doing what everyone else models we should do, doing what we think we should be doing, copying other people that we're seeing out there who look like they're happy, whether they actually are happy or not. I mean, again, that's an assumption, right? If we look at someone's exterior and make a decision based on their exterior, oh, they must be happier than I am. It's amazing when you dig into people's lives, people who you look at and go, wow, from the outside, they've got everything. Then you hear what, what they're really dealing with and what's going on, which is why it's so important to know that you are here as an individual and we are all here together, which is great. And we're all supposed to be individual as well as collective. So why are you alive to me is really a question about are you allowing yourself to be here for what you want to be here for? And as I say that, I sense a whole bunch of you right now who are in that uncomfortable place between the agendas, desires, needs of other people that you're in relationship to, perhaps you're in business contracts with, rubbing up against a part of you that's, oh, I need to break out. I need to do something different. I might not know what it is yet, but I can tell that something in my body isn't yet fully expressed in the way I want it to be. So I think that's where that question is coming from for that group of you who are right on that edge of, I don't fully know why I'm alive or what I want yet, but I do know it's not this, this, and this that I'm currently in. So if you can be patient with that process and recognize it will lead you where you want to go, uh, it's an edgy process, but it's a necessary process to get you to the other side. So, and if you want, by the way, jot that down, write down, why am I alive? And just without thinking about it too much, just see what falls onto the page. It might be really illuminating and you might go, oh, there's a purpose and a vision I didn't know I should be working towards. Or it might be the opposite and you might start to see a list of things that you don't agree with and you're like, oh God, I don't want to be alive just because I'm here to help that person. And that's going to be good too because it will make you think broader think bigger, think in a fuller way. So the final theme is vision a new future for yourself and us all. This is a collective superpower. Over the years, uh, the, the, the channels have said a lot that we have to be very careful about being told how things are going to be by others and believing that, especially when they have said we have a very doom and gloom narrative running collectively. So I'm always loving when I see uh, people who share not only stories of transformation, but the science of transformation that we're seeing coming out now. The Z's have said for many years, we're going to increasingly see incredible innovations coming out. And there have been some amazing things I've been hearing about, witnessing over the last year. And yet our mainstream collective, uh, if you like, um, news focus doesn't necessarily share those. So you have to look. And you have to search and you have to go, you have to find the, the outlets less traveled, basically, when it comes to media reporting, all of those things. And we have an opportunity to do that right now. So vision a new future for yourself and us all. Do you find yourself just going into doom and gloom fear when you are told certain things? Or do you recognize the fear in that potential outcome and do you go, okay, well, how are we going to transform this? How can I help transform it? How might there be other people out there in the world transforming it right now that I need to find and see evidence of? But also our vision is so powerful. And if we 
spend all our time focusing on a vision that's very limited, guess what? We're going to create a very limited vision. But if we're able to go, okay, well, I would like my personal life and the life of all of us on the planet to be more expanded, more harmonious, more supportive of all of the systems on planet Earth that need to be supported, then we can start to create it together. So I think often it's interesting because science has proven the power of vision and the power of visioning. And yet collectively in our mental conditioning, you know, the, the term woo-woo is thrown around a lot. And it's kind of a, a, a dig. It's kind of a diss. When people, and people will often say, oh, this is a bit woo-woo. And they'll say it to try and in some ways, understandably, appease or warn the people in the group who might judge them for saying it. So they're also trying to bridge people to woo-woo. But it, it's interesting, you know, this term woo-woo has to go away. We've been spiritual beings since day one. We were just taught we weren't. And being a spiritual being does not mean you're not human. Both coexist. This is a spiritual human being. You are a spiritual human being. Whether you read spiritual books or not, that's not what it's about. So can we vision a new future for ourselves and us all? Because that is a collective superpower. So try and stay clear about that whenever you're in a group think scenario where a group of people are very much doom and gloom and just notice it and go, oh, interesting. This is where they're all vibrating. And ask yourself, is that where I want to vibrate or do I want to be here for transformation, possibility, consciousness, presence, love? Make your choice. Goes back a little bit to why are you alive? Choosing for yourself rather than letting others choose for you within the freedom that we have to do that while acknowledging there are certain freedoms we don't have in our current systems for that. But within the freedom that we do have, what can we recreate and conjure for ourselves and for others? So thank you for tuning in, everyone. Um, initiation has already started. Uh, it will run through November. And basically every week I am handing the mic to my guides, the Z's, on a Wednesday. So we do a fully live broadcast. But for those of you who can't be there for the live, everything is a replay and a transcript and you have lifetime access to it. So no pressure to join us uh, on the day that we do the live broadcast. I also add other videos that help you integrate the messages from the Z's. And we have a brand new music album called Timelines, which will be given to you in the course as well as support materials. We'll play a trailer at the end of this video if you're interested or you can click the link below. We'd love to have you join us. And if you are with us, thank you for being with us. Uh, it's already a wild ride. Um, the portal is my members community where we give you lots of tools, videos, audios, that really are designed to support you as a sensitive, awakening being. So if you haven't tried out the portal, try it out for a month and see if it's for you. There is a wealth of content in there, including not only from myself, Stephen Washington. Uh, we also have a guest teacher every month called, it's in a section called The Portal Presents. So do check out The Portal if you want to go deeper with me and my work and the work of others to support your transformation, your journey. And uh, again, thank you everyone for the love you've shown for Conversations with Disease book one. I'm thrilled that we'll bring out book two next spring, but for now it's just great to know that it's touching you all. So from me and my team, lots of love until next month. Take good care of yourselves. I'm thrilled to announce that we are bringing initiation back for 2022. We first held it at the end of last year, and it is a channeled mystery school. Even I don't fully know what my guides will bring through in the weekly transmissions, but their intent, and this is the message they've given me, is to synchronize us with the frequencies, the information, and the energies for this passage of time that we're moving through. I can attest that it was very powerful last year, and we had over 5,000 people join us from all around the world. So it was an incredible container. This year, we are starting initiation on October 26th. And for those of you who would like to join us live, I will be doing weekly live broadcasts where I channel my guides for 90 minutes each time. 
And in between those live broadcasts, I like to deliver what I call a calibration video, where I will guide you through the energetic and psychological process that we go through. If you want to watch it on replay, you will have lifetime access to all of the material. So whether you can join us live or not, you will get around 10 hours worth of material. This includes a welcome MP3 message from my guides all about what the initiation journey is designed to be and what you will be inviting into your life as you take this ride with us. We are also giving you our brand new album, Timelines, which we have paired with the course and you will be receiving that two months ahead of everyone else. Alongside that, we have self-care guides and a wonderful community forum where you can share with other members of the group what you're going through, how you're experiencing it, and there is so much medicine in that community. These are always very exciting and slightly unknown events for me because in turning over to my guides as much as I'm about to, I always know that we're going to go on a very shamanic journey but it always seems to intersect perfectly with what's going on in the world at that time and what those of us who show up for the journey are bringing in and calling in for our year to come. So if initiation feels like the right call for you at the right time, we would love to welcome you. Click the link below for more details.